To this day, the murals of the north of Ireland are a significant method of community expression. An expression of ownership. An expression of strife. An expression of pride. Some of the most important aspects of the community can be captured in these works of public art. And this is the story behind them. The story begins with loyalists to the British Crown, a community in the North that has always been proud of their ownership of the land. In the 1600s, during the plantation of Ulster, Protestants from Britain came to the North and took possession of the most fertile land in an early wave of colonization. Even now, the Protestant loyalist communities continue to take pride in the fact that they own the land, rather than the native Irish, predominantly Catholic population. They have always expressed their ownership in their neighborhoods very openly. They fly the Union Jack. They fly the Red Hand of Ulster. They paint their curbstones red, white, and blue. Near the end of the 18th century, when Protestant King William of Orange defeated Catholic King James, it sealed the Protestant Loyalist community's dominance over the island for years to come. At the turn of the 20th century, Protestant neighborhoods in the two largest cities in the north, Derry and Belfast, began to paint large murals in honor of King William. These murals still exist today, as do other signs of these neighborhoods' British patriotism. But Loyalist neighborhoods aren't the only neighborhoods with murals. Irish people have always fought against the British occupancy of the island. In the War of Independence of 1920, they finally won some independence from Britain. Ireland was partitioned, 26 counties in the south becoming a free state, and 6 counties in the north remaining under direct British control. In the north, Irish national identity and republicanism were harshly persecuted. Eventually, after many atrocities by Unionist paramilitary groups, the British Army, and several failed revolts, the Irish Republican Army rebelled in the early 1970s, starting the decades-long conflict known as the Troubles. Through the early stages of this conflict, Republican prisoners were given political status. This meant that the British allowed them to wear their own clothes, assemble, and not do prison work while in jail. But in the mid-1970s, they were denied these rights. This sparked a protest known as the Blanket Protest. Republican prisoners refused to wear prison uniforms during this period, meaning that since the prison officers refused to let them wear their own clothes, they were forced to wear only a blanket inside of their cell. This protest was ultimately unsuccessful at winning back their political status. Then came another protest, hunger strike, refusing food until their simple demands were met. Ten Irish prisoners died during these strikes, including Member of Parliament Bobby Sands. It was during the period of these two protests that Republican murals began to appear in Irish neighborhoods. These murals expressed support for the protesters in the prison, first during the blanket protest and later during the hunger strikes. Murals on both sides can often have very different messages because they come out of a variety of times and circumstances. Because loyalist communities consider their history and heritage as essential to their culture, their murals will often assert their right of ownership over the North. This is the reason that loyalist murals are often very militaristic. As subjects, they will use King William in battle, various military coats of arms, the Union Jack flag, and different versions of the Red Hand of Ulster. Nationalist murals, on the other hand, first came as a means of expression for their community who could not otherwise communicate their viewpoint. They gave a voice to people who had no voice. In this way, although both sides of the national question use murals in the North, the murals come from very different traditions and places. One comes from a desire to assert dominance, and the other to resist it. 
This is perhaps most evident when looking at how the same image can be used by both sides and showcase different ideologies. For example, the northern folk hero Cú Chulainn can represent Irish identity and a Republican cause, or as a loyalist defender of Ulster. Murals are also a powerful form of propaganda. It is entirely possible for people to walk by the same exact murals many times a day. This can profoundly affect public opinion. Therefore, mural art has always been very contentious. Politicians speak out in support or opposition of murals, and some murals are so important to their communities that the Belfast Telegraph once reported that for them to be removed, an armed guard would be needed. This would be true whether on the predominantly nationalist Falls Road or loyalist East Belfast. There are still murals about the historical oppression or dominance the community has experienced, about hunger strikers like Bobby Sands or about Ulster Defense Force fighters. But many Republican murals also tell the stories of other places in the world who have similar experiences with colonization as Ireland. The most prominent place in the murals is Palestine, but they also show solidarity with South Africa and Catalonia. Loyalist communities will often oppose these stances with murals standing in solidarity with Israel, for example. They share a history of superiority with these communities, and they also instinctively oppose what nationalists support. There is another trend in modern murals. While almost all art in the North is political to some extent, new murals have moved away from overt political messaging. Contemporary murals discuss many ideas and concepts. They may not side directly with either side, because they often are not discussing the conflict or anything related to it. Instead, today's murals are about folklore, mythology, or modern culture. Even though there are some connotations of political identity associated with how they represent such issues, the ideas presented are largely apolitical. In some cases, murals are entirely divorced from political messaging. These murals showcase abstract ideas, strange concepts, sweeping landscapes, or memorials for recent tragedies. In some ways, though, the very existence of these murals is political. It shows a support for peace and reconciliation on both sides of the conflict and the similarities between them. Murals in the north of Ireland have a massive impact on the landscape of its cities, of the region, and the people of the region. These murals serve many different purposes. To honor lives lost. To confirm dominance. To foment resistance. To connect with heritage. Murals allow the people of the North not only to showcase their ideologies, but to deal with the past and look toward the future in a positive light. <laughs> 